Hi, my name is Teresa Valentino. I'm a survivor of child sex trafficking and I have a mental health DIY blog where I share my savvy that I survive with, pro tips, things that I've learned the hard way that hopefully you can use the easy and good way. TeresaValentino.com and here on YouTube as well. So I would like to quickly define a few terms, uh, different ideas that play into the mental health process that I am undergoing so that people can um, know what I'm talking about. Like some of these experiences that I have are so multi-layered that unless people have been sort of brought up to speed on what happens with real extreme kind of PTSD symptoms, they may not really even understand what I'm trying to say, much less what happened there. So one of them is um, subjective distress. I'm gonna make this real quick. Subjective distress is the idea of being upset by how out of control the situation is, right? Like if you get to the point where you can't function because you're having flashbacks or you need to wash your hands 20 times a day, um, whatever the case may be, just when you notice that things are off the rails, sometimes that feeling of, oh my God, things are really off the rails can really just throw everything completely into the fire, right? Out of the frying pan into the fire, just into the dumpster. So, um, Subjective distress is something that I had to learn how to get on top of because subjective distress is just where everything goes wrong. You can choose to just accept that this is the way things are and a lot of other people have to live this way too and just know that that's true and real. Other people have been hurt much worse than I have for definite sure. Um, and it's just, it's just the way life is. People, this is what it's about. You just have to walk through the valley that you're in. So um, no subjective distress. You can't get upset about how upsetting it all is, basically. Uh, subjective distress will absolutely destroy any perspective, okay? Now, I'm not saying this is easy by any means. I go through such extreme situations of mental health duress that, you know, even as positive and as hardworking as I am for my mental health for going on 30 years now, almost three decades of like serious elbow grease on feeling good about myself and my life and living the life that I wanna live, 30 years of that stuff. I still have flare-ups of depression where it's all I can do to just keep myself and my home clean and fed. That is all, you know what I mean? I can just lay there and cry not worry about things, try to pray a lot, and just wait until it's over with because I, there's no reason for me to get out of bed. So you just have to not be flipped out or resentful or confused by that. You just have to understand, learn how to take things as they are for you, learn how to know what's real for you and what you really need and what you really, what you really need, not what you really want. Because wanting is a big pain in the butt. That will lead you totally astray. Wanting is like subjective distress. It's just a choice and you can just do it, just don't. Um, needing things, you know, you will find out what you need. You know, that's one of those things. I had to learn that when I got foreclosed. Like, I had to learn that if I don't have it and I can't get it, I don't need it. You know, you don't need anything. You don't even need to live right? But I have found that the more that I just go with the flow and come up with, you know, the best I can do in each situation and kind of just stay centered and stay on keel, that the easier and the better I get through things, you know, the more uh, clarity and the happier I am with my outcomes, basically, with my decision making, because when you're in these kind of states of intense PTSD, anxiety, depression, and I don't even drink, you know what I mean? I, you know, a lot of people have a lot of stuff going on that makes it really hard for them. And it, that stuff is super, super um, confusing. And then you start making worse and worse judgments, and then you get into worse and worse situations. You see what I'm I'm talking about. So if you can limit the parts of it that you can definitely limit, like the outright choices, like subjective distress, you can just go ahead and take a few moments to get used to the fact that your life has changed in a certain way and that when you get to the other side of this, it's definitely going to be better. It'll be noticeably better. Life will be noticeably easier and more meaningful and you'll learn something about yourself that you will be able to use later. 
So that is subjective distress. And uh, check my blog at TeresaValentino.com for Survivor Pro Tips. I'm going to have a few of these mental health definitions. And, um, of course, here on Teresa Valentino on YouTube as well. And my book is coming out soon. Um, be sure to sign up for a free advanced reading copy of Dear Jimmy, What a Child Trafficking Survivor Wishes You Knew at TeresaValentino.com. Please rate, comment, subscribe. Bye.